Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Thursday, August the 15th, 2024. Today I want to talk about Donald Trump because a lot of people have been saying that uh, his campaign is exploding. Even his uh, supporters are suggesting that things are not looking good. He had this interview with Elon Musk that was delayed and uh, some people are suggesting he didn't come over well, that he was slurring his speech and of course the sort of anti-Trump com comedians, anti-Trump people on social media have been going on and on about it and so yeah things do look problematic for him. And yeah, and some people may be thinking that this is the end, that uh, you know things really are looking good for Kamala Harris. And so I wanted to consider, you know, what is going on with Donald Trump right now? Um, why is he going through this bad patch? Is this bad patch going to change? Is this bad patch going to get worse? So I think that's really is something that we do need to look at. Though we shouldn't forget if we look at say. Trump's campaign in 2016, at this stage in the election, uh, he was actually doing worse than he is now. Uh, Hillary was uh, further ahead in mid-August 2016 than Kamala was in, was this, this year, right now. And, uh, you know, likewise with Biden and Trump in 2020, uh, in August 2020, I believe that, Trump, that Biden was you know, substantially ahead of, of Trump. So you know, this is a stage in the election, in the election year, that I suppose you can say traditionally, Trump is not doing too well in. So there's plenty of scope for things to improve. And, uh, you know, at the same time, it, the dynamic is, I suppose, different. Uh, Trump is not president as he was in 2020. So because he was president, he, because he wasn't president in 2020, I suppose that means that uh, events could trip up Kamala Harris. For example, if there was a prolonged stock market crash or collapse in the stock market, that's unlikely to have a negative effect on Trump, but it probably would have a negative effect on Kamala Harris or if, if there was some global event which just continued messing things up, it's more likely that it would impact Kamala Harris. But still, I don't really want to talk about Kamala Harris in this video. I want to talk about Donald Trump and I just want to look at you know what is going wrong here. And, you know, I'm kind of inclined to think that... Uh, you would expect at this stage something to change in his favour quite quickly. And if it doesn't change, one might be concerned. And we have to bear in mind that we've got a full moon on Monday. And I th think this full moon is important. And uh, we really do need to look out for it in terms of what changes when that full moon happens. On Monday, first day of a Democratic uh, National Convention. And, uh, oh, I should also say that uh, it is India's birthday. So happy birthday, India. India's Independence Day is August the 15th. But uh, I'm afraid I'm not going to be looking at India's chart uh, today. Maybe another time. OK, so let's look at what's going on today, which is Thursday, August 15th, 2024. Um, you know, just a reminder that I would be incredibly grateful if you were to indicate that you like this video assuming of course you do like this video of course if you don't like the video that's another matter and I would be super grateful if you're not subscribed and you enjoy this video if you were to subscribe because I don't think it costs you anything and it does make a, a big difference to the channel okay so let's uh, look at what is happening astrologically so here is a chart for today Thursday, August the 15th, 2024. And you can see that the moon is in a late Sagittarius. At least it's in late Sagittarius at noon in New York 
on August the 15th. The moon moves into Sagittarius, sorry, the moon moves into Capricorn at uh, nine minutes to seven in the evening in London. So if you are in Europe or Africa, then this evening is going to be sort of moon in Capricorn time, you know, when perhaps some of the fiery excitement of Sagittarius moves into the practical, no-nonsense approach of Capricorn. So this evening in Europe may be quite a sort of a, a staid time when you can address yourself to perhaps important material details or you might just want to relax and uh, not do anything too exciting. Do we need excitement? Probably not. You know, we, we can get too much, have too much of a good thing. Now, if you're in the Americas, the moon moves into Capricorn, you know, earlier in the day. It moves in at sort of around sort of 10 to 2 in the afternoon on the East Coast and 10 to 11 in the morning on the West Coast. So it is in the Americas going to be sort of a, a 50 50 day. And the morning is going to be more about moon in Capricorn. Sorry, the morning is going to be more about moon in Sagittarius. The afternoon and evening is going to be more about moon in Capricorn. So over the course of the day, you might feel that you have to start addressing yourself to serious matters or at least more serious matters. And it just may feel that things are starting to calm down a little bit. And the moon, as it moves into Capricorn, just before it moves into Capricorn, it makes trine aspects to the sun and Mercury. So moon trine sun, okay, it's going to be especially strong, strong at moon trine sun if you're in Australia or New Zealand or Eastern, Eastern Asia. But I think all of us are going to feel this and moon trine sun is about a general sense of harmony, things um, running well together, um, they're not being um, too many disruptors. And, you know, we might just feel that just we're, we're at one with our environment. And, you know, likewise, moon trine Mercury is, you know, it's a great time to, to I suppose, be, exp be expressing ourselves, but being able to think things through in a calm way. Though, in terms of Mercury, we should remember that last night or this evening, depending on where you are, Mercury changed signs. Uh, Mercury moved uh, from Virgo into, sorry, moved from, yeah, moved from Virgo into Leo. So Moon moving from Virgo into Leo does create a change of, a change of emphasis. Remember, it's going retrograde. So that's why it can move from a sign, it can move from one sign to its preceding sign. And so that movement from Mercury to Leo may make some of us more proud. We may lose perhaps some of our analytical edge. And it may not be enough just to be right. We want to be seen to be right. And I suppose at its worst, it may be more important to get appreciation than to get our facts right and I suppose that's uh, you know very much part of the times in which we're living you know we look at the news that that basically supports our ego I mean we all do it don't we if we're not happy with something you know I suppose if you're unhappy that if you don't like the fact that Trump is losing all you do is you google Trump is winning and oh, when I say Trump is losing I mean what I mean to say is right now short term you don't like the fact that he's doing badly in the polls you don't like to look at uh, mainstream media gloating about it so what you do is you restrict your Google search to sites that will put a positive spin on it and it works the other way doesn't it if in the future you see Kamala losing, you're just uh, winning. <laughs> you're sorry, Kamala losing. You'll just you know you'll just find supportive sites. So, and I think there is perhaps for all of us with Mercury moving from Virgo into Leo, we might be attracted to 
information that uh, suits our ego, suits our preferred narrative. So with Mercury and Leo, we just have to tr make a special effort perhaps to be open-minded. Um, we mustn't be too proud because I think the facts in the end are more important than our pride. And also, one should point out, I should point out, that Mercury is Quincunx Neptune. So Mercury at 29 Leo is making an 150 degree aspect to Neptune. And that may be more of the same, because there's Mercury and Leo. Mercury and Leo is very proud. Mercury likes to be right, and it's Quincunx Neptune. Neptune, the planet of deception and delusion. And uh, so we might be very sure of ourselves. I know, I know how it's all going to work. I, I'm confident. But then Neptune comes along and it, uh, it confuses us. It trips us up. It makes us think things that are just simply untrue. So if you feel today very confident of something, really, really confident, then just consider the possibility that perhaps you have been uh, tripping yourself up. It is possible. And then the moon goes into Capricorn and... After that, there aren't any lunar aspects that come up, come up in really major lunar aspects at the beginning of Capricorn. But there are two aspects that I perhaps need to point out in the fact that that is Mercury is quintile Mars and the Sun is biquintile Neptune. So Mercury quintile Mars, that's a 72 degree, that's a 72 degree aspect. That's one fifth of the circle. So it is what we are trying to create. It's what we're trying to make. It's the impression we are trying to give. And the impression we are trying to give is that uh, we can be very verbal. We're going to want to be able to express our ideas powerfully and perhaps aggressively. And you know, that might be something that really motivates us. We might be therefore be making a special effort to use strong language, whether it's written in the written word or it's um, the spoken word. And, you know, we might believe that we can actually create something through the strength of our words. And at the same time, we've got Sun by Quintile Neptune. Sun by Quintile Neptune does represent a fantasy, but it's Sun by Quintile Neptune. What does that mean? It's we perhaps at some level want to dissolve into something else. We want to be part of something. And so some of us may be making a special effort to be part of something beyond ourselves. Another aspect that needs to be considered, or at least should be considered, is Sun Trine Charon. So the Sun is at 23 Leo and Charon is at 23 Aries. So that Sun Trine Charon could, uh, could work in several ways. I mean, one way in which the Sun Charon Trine might work is that we might feel that we need to do things differently if we take the view that Charon is the maverick, someone who doesn't like to follow the party line, doesn't like to follow accepted norms. So we're going to do things in a way that uh, other people are not expecting. And if we get attention through our eccentric behaviour, then so much the better. Though there is, of course, a healing side to Charon, and so with Sun Trine Charon, maybe through the strength of our personality, we can make someone feel better. And it's, you know, some people perhaps are feeling uh, a bit low, um, something bothering them. They may even feel that they don't really exist. <laughs> and somehow through, this, through our enthusiasm and our, our consistent strength, and life-giving warmth, we can, uh, yeah, just make feel, someone feel a lot better about themselves. 
Now, there is one midpoint that I need to talk about, and that is Mars on the Jupiter-Saturn midpoint. So, yesterday, Wednesday, we had a conjunction between Mars and Mars and Jupiter. Tomorrow, Friday, we have a square between Mars and Saturn. So what's happening is that Mars is sort of halfway between the conjunction of Jupiter and the square of Saturn. And in a way, both aspects are very much operational. I know the Mars-Jupiter conjunction was yesterday, but it's still very much t happening today. And although the Mars square Saturn is tomorrow, it's still very much a feature of today. And so we shouldn't forget that. So how do we marry these two concepts, Mars to conjunct Jupiter, having a lot of energy? We want things to happen. We want to move. Um, maybe we've got too much energy. Mars square Saturn, we hit a brick wall, we feel frustrated, we can't do what we want to do. So this is uh, this is a high pressure, It's it feels like two completely incompatible things are smashing into each other. And then we've got Mars, therefore, on the Jupiter-Saturn midpoint, and there could be a lot of anger and frustration and also, with Jupiter-Saturn, we just have to consider what's happening in the world. As I keep saying, Jupiter -Sat the Jupiter-Saturn pair is about the economy, it's about society, it's about the world at large. Jupiter and Saturn are social planets. And so with Mars hitting the Jupiter-Saturn midpoint, we, we're just very aware of what's happening out there and how it impacts us, because it does impact us. Things happening politically and economically don't just impact us. They make us feel things. We get angry about what's happening in the world. You know, that anger perhaps depends on who you are, what your political opinions are, it depends you know, where you live, what country you live in, what what are the big issues in your country. And so that anger, I think, is, is quite strong. It may not be just about you. It may be about other people in, in the society around you. So I, I, we should not underestimate that Mars hitting the Jupiter-Saturn midpoint. It's... Uh, it's... It is... I believe something something very strong and it may manifest in actual sort of real real events I mean that aspect by the way it is going to be a, it's going to be a I would have thought that would be a yeah that would be Mars on the Jupiter Saturn midpoint it's going to be a semi square 45 degree aspect to the Jupiter Saturn midpoint and um, so do do look out for that. Okay, let's uh, quickly look at the heliocentric picture. Uh, here is the positions of the planets uh, from a heliocentric view. Um, you can see that uh, the sun is, the earth rather, is getting ever closer to that square with Uranus. And I talked about that yesterday. Earth square Uranus is is stirring things up, and it's a reminder that uh, the sun is mo the sun is also moving to the sun geocentrically. The sun is square Uranus. Heliocentrically, the Earth is square Uranus. They're basically saying the same thing, and with Earth square Uranus, it's things are starting to stir up, and I suppose that's maybe in preparation for the full moon on Monday. And I do think that full moon on Monday is going to be a big event. And I will be talking about it uh, in some detail at, at a later stage. And Mercury is moving to a semi-sextile of Saturn. Um, I'm not saying that that semi-sextile is particularly important. Remember, semi-sextile is a 30-degree aspect that... Uh, Things could be becoming um, 
a little bit frustrating. And I suppose Mercury semi-sextile Saturn, it kind of reminds us that tomorrow we've got Mars square Saturn and Mars square Saturn, we're already feeling it. It just may feel at times that we are hitting a brick wall. There's a lot to be, I think, very frustrated about and uh, we can't ju we can't just go charging into things just hoping somehow we're going to get through we might not be able to get through and i think we're going to have to be prepared well prepared we can't just overall we just can't rush into things without a plan we very much do need a plan Okay, that's the heliocentric picture. I don't think there is a great deal to report. So I'm now going to do my forecasts for the 12 signs for today, which is Thursday, August the 15th, 2020 or 2024. So here we go. Here are my forecasts for the 12 signs for today, which is Thursday. Aries, you are feeling as if you might actually be under quite a lot of pressure at the moment because we've got these two really very important aspects at the moment. You know, one was exact yesterday, one is going to be exact tomorrow. So, yesterday we had Mars conjunct Jupiter. Mars, your ruler, was conjunct Jupiter. That's you, uh, hopefully, wanting to be active, being dynamic, uh, really wanting to have a powerful impact. Then tomorrow, we've got Mars square Saturn, which is giving us something very different. It's Mars square Saturn is about you looking at some of the things that are restricting you, being very aware of those restrictions, and perhaps being a little bit frustrated. And I, I'm not even convinced that we should see these two aspects as being coming one after the other. They're almost coming at the same time, only two days apart. And today, you kind of get both of them. It's like you're in the middle of uh, two contending forces you might feel that you are deep underground in some in the middle of some fault whatever the san andreas fault or you're in the middle and you've got these two things on either side of you and they're sort of hemming you in and you're trying to um you're you're trying to um stay powerful and keep your focus but it is hard work and you you cannot really expect things to be simple. I, I don't think that is possible. You can't expect, for example, things to be entirely negative. It is very easy to be very negative at the moment. But it's also very easy to be entirely positive. And perhaps you just have to, at the moment, Aries, live with complete ambiguity. Just accept the fact that there's a lot to be optimistic about. Also accept the fact that there's a lot to be pessimistic about. And you don't have to respond if you don't want to respond. You know, I know that there's a, a, a temptation to act, you know, when you, Aries feels frustrated, when you can't get things moving, it's, it's tempting to do something. But you don't have to do it. On the other hand, if you feel that the world is against you, it's tempting to give up. But again, it's not about giving up. I think it is just about saying that, uh, yeah, it is a complicated world. It, it doesn't have to be personal. Because Mars is aspecting Jupiter and Saturn, and Jupiter and Saturn are social planets. Yeah, they are part of who you are, but they are social planets. And... It's not about necessarily your personality. It's about society and how you are uh, dealing with society and how you, how you are actually engaging with society. And it's 
it's not easy, but it's not easy for anyone. And I suppose if anyone can actually deal with these issues, it's probably you. But you've got to be very mature about it, mature and responsible. And yes, you've got to be able to live with ambiguity. Now, having quite a sensible approach as the day progresses is going to be important. Because today, okay, maybe tomorrow, depending on where you are, the moon moves from Sagittarius to Capricorn. Now, if you're in Europe, that's going to be more about this evening. If you're in the Americas, that's going to be more about this afternoon and this evening. But with the moon moving into Capricorn, what you have to do is you have to be, I suppose, realistic and down to earth and above all, don't panic. You know, that is a very moon in Capricorn thing, moon, not panicking just seeing things as they are rather than trying to interpret them you know if you try to interpret things then your interpretations might might well be wrong they might be too optimistic too pessimistic just look at the facts and i think the facts should guide you now of course if you're in um if you're in australia or new zealand or Asia, that moon in Capricorn is going to be more about tomorrow and uh, it'll be a sort of moon in Sagittarius day. So it is to an extent dependent on your time zone. So what I'm saying, Aries, is it's a complicated day. I mean, it's a complicated day for everyone, but I think it's a complicated day particularly for you because you kind of feel you're on the you're on the the sharp end of the whole thing you, you're actually where these two faults are actually clashing into each other and you're having you're having to sort of manage it and somehow you can do it it is absolutely possible and if you can bring together the sort of the optimism of jupiter and the realism of saturn and they can make you can you can and if you can make them really a part of your life then you're going to be the one who is controlled in control you will have access and con access to these social forces of jupiter and saturn you will i'm not saying you're going to be able to control them no one can control jupiter and saturn but you'll be able to understand their energy and perhaps harness their energy and they're very contradictory energy and harness it in such a way that uh, you can start to actually use it in a way that uh, in the end you may be able to further your own interests and not just further your own interests but perhaps be a calming influence on the people around you. Taurus Taurus, you are a bit uh, confused today. It's not entirely clear to you uh, what is happening. And, you know, think about your conscious mind. And, you know, what are you thinking about? And are you able to be aware and present uh, all day long the answer may be no there may be just moments Taurus when you're not there when when you're just pretty unsure about what's going on and if you made some effort to try to articulate what's happening you you might fail and so maybe Taurus you should simply keep an open mind and have an open heart and just accept that things are happening that you don't understand. Don't make sense of them. Don't try to make sense of them. Don't, don't act on them. And I think that is the important point. Don't, don't act on what you see and what you experience. Well, unless, of course, it's really important. But uh, 
you know, things are very much up in the air. And if you accept that things are up in the air, then I do think that things are going to be really a lot easier for you. Now, on an emotional level, I think that today, particularly the beginning of the day, I I think that your emotions are going to be quite strong and you you're going to feel things that perhaps other people don't don't feel and you may sort of have a sense of human suffering i don't i'm not talking about your suffering just to make that clear just human suffering the fact that people out there are perhaps in pain and perhaps that's just just something you happen to be picking up on it's not even that you're picking up on it really on an emotional level you're just picking up on it and just you can you can just see it you can see the signs of suffering out there in the world and it's just clear to you it's obvious it it doesn't take any time it just is very much with you now quite what you do about that well it's, it's to an extent it's about opportunity and being real you know it's, it's, sometimes there really is nothing you can do but uh, you perhaps need to see if there's something happening in your immediate environment which you can do something about you just have a feeling that something is wrong and you also have a feeling that there's something you can do about it and you can then look at the situation and understand what you can do so in some small way Taurus I believe that you can actually make the world a better place but it's don't take risks it's 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 just probably something very spontaneous um, that, that that doesn't require a great commitment of time it, but it's just being absolutely present perhaps for someone for just a few minutes and just being present at a particular time Taurus maybe all that's required of you and just that is it and you know while you're going about your travels today uh, Taurus you're going to notice I think that people are on edge uh, you know a lot of people are on edge uh, and, and indeed some of the people who are important to you may be on edge they they feel conflicted and they're not quite sure what to do and they may alternate and that might be quite confusing today people may alternate from being wildly enthusiastic to being wildly negative in a, in a sort of a fairly almost bipolar kind of way remember i'm using bipolar not in a clinical way i'm using it in a layman's terms you know just uh, using it as a sort of metaphor for the way it feels like so there may be a sort of a bipolarity to the people around you and it may be very difficult to accurately gauge what they really think because you know one moment they're they're thinking everything's going to be fine the next moment it's all a disaster and i think you just need to let this thing settle and so if you get a blast of feeling from another person so someone really tr tries to tell you how they feel yeah sure you may be able to help them you may be able to heal them depends on the situation but it just may be that you're looking at what's happening right now the moment and five or ten minutes later it could be completely different so that may say that if you're trying to help and understand someone maybe you should allow some time to pass you know because what's the case 
one moment may be different the next moment and so you perhaps need to need to sort of perhaps look at a situation or a person over a period of i don't know 10 minutes 15 minutes and not jump to immediate conclusions because people just don't know how to respond people don't know what the right way to deal with today's rather complex energies is so that's uh, that is is something that you really do have to um, bear in mind and in terms of talking about your mind, um, it seems that it would be a good idea if you made a special effort to keep things simple. And you shouldn't think that the information you're looking for needs to come from far away. Some of the information you're looking for... The things that allow allow you to make sense of the world. Some of the information you're looking for is really close at home. It's right in front of you. So if it's something you want to know, it, you know, it may be some paperwork that's in front of you. It may be that members of your family know something. You spend a long time asking people around the world a question, and all along, some member of your family knew it they just knew it or perhaps a book you were looking for or a fact you were looking for is just is right where you live and if you go back over old ground whether that old ground is is your own home the, the people who live in your own home um, relatives going back over this kind of ground you may then be able to find the information that you are looking for Gemini, Mercury is moving back from Virgo into Gemini, sorry, Virgo into Leo. And I would have said that's something of a two-edged sword. You know, when Mercury was in Gemini, it, it was very well placed. Sorry, let me say that again. When Mercury was in Virgo, Gemini, uh, Mercury was well placed. Mercury Mercury rules Virgo, and in some respects, over the last week or two, your mind has been on good form. Uh, there have been a lot of things that you've been able to work out, and information has been available to you, and your powers of analysis have been very good. But now Mercury is moving out of Gemini. Sorry, why do I keep saying Gemini? Mercury is moving out of Virgo into Leo. And that may say something about who you are, how you express yourself, and perhaps how you, how you see yourself. With Mercury moving back into Leo, there may be times when you feel somewhat proud you feel you want attention. You feel you want to be taken seriously. You perhaps feel you know things that other people just don't know. And I mean, that can always be a problem with Gemini. You know, Geminis do have an arrogant streak. It may not be a justified arrogant streak, but they still have it. And they just know that in some areas they, they're they better than other people. I suppose I'm speaking as someone of the sun in Gemini. So um, I'm sort of aware of my, my, my own arrogance and perhaps my misplaced arrogance. And it's just important with Mercury going back into Leo that you you don't make assumptions about how right you are. Yeah, you may be very clever, but you absolutely haven't got all the answers. And y you shouldn't be afraid of backtracking, of admitting that you've got something wrong. Um, you know, you think about, uh, you know, poor Donald Trump. I'll be talking about Donald Trump later in this video. But Donald Trump, he's got the sun in Gemini. It seems that He's perhaps made a few mistakes in his campaign uh, recently. And so with Mercury moving back into Leo, 
how's he going to respond to criticism? You know, we're not going to see it, but you know, people are going to come in, are going to be um, perhaps suggesting to him that he needs to change things. He needs to alter his approach, and we don't know how he's going to respond. But uh, if he's got any sense, he will listen to uh, listen to that uh, criticism. You know. Perhaps you need to tune into your inner Donald Trump with Mercury moving into uh, Leo, uh, your inner Donald Trump. But what I mean by that is perhaps thinking you're great and then getting a little bit of criticism and being suggested, being suggested to you that maybe you could do something differently. Maybe you could change the emphasis. You don't want to listen to criticism. I, you know, I, I hate criticism. I, I really do as a Gemini. I don't like it. You know, when when I look at the comments on this channel, I do get criticised. I get criticised for all sorts of things. Some of the criticisms are justified, some of them are not. I get criticised for being too hesitant, for umming, for ahhing, not getting to the point. Do I just ignore the criticism? I don't like the criticism. Of course I don't like the criticism. You know, I'm a Gemini. Well, no one likes criticism, but you know, you've got to... You've got to at least listen to the, listen to criticism, and I think... You know, with Mercury moving moving back into Leo, I I do think that that is going to be is going to be very important. But that's uh, not the only thing happening today. You know, we've got, for example, the Moon starting to move out of Sagittarius and into Capricorn, and I think the Moon moving out of Sagittarius into Capricorn perhaps allows some of us to become more serious and you know to address serious issues we know we understand we know we're through with the moon in sagittarius there have been people out there who have we've had to deal with and we've listened to them and hopefully we've understood their message but now with the moon moving into capricorn we perhaps need to take a more serious approach we need to start thinking for ourselves but also start feeling for ourselves as well you know we need to be able to tune into our feelings and the gemini's are sometimes a little bit uncomfortable with emotion but uh, you know we all of us have deep emotion and we perhaps need to be able to to engage with that emotion and you know try to work out where that emotion is actually taking us and I suppose it doesn't help, but we perhaps live in a complicated world. We live in a very complicated world. Uh, you know, Mars is moving. Th Mars is moving through Gemini. It's moving through our sign. Mars is, yeah, it's been conjunct Jupiter. So we've had moments recently where we may have been very optimistic, very enthusiastic about what is possible, but now we're beginning to to aware that be aware that for you know for for every possibility there is a hard reality and we're trying to bring these together and we're getting mixed messages you know left right and center you know all of us are getting mixed messages but i think gemini's in particular are getting these mixed messages and it's, it's just difficult to know how to respond and i suppose the best way to respond to what's happening today when we're when we're we're stuck between a Mars conjunct Jupiter yesterday and Mars square Saturn tomorrow is, is just be a Gemini and to perhaps use the strength of being a Gemini. And perhaps the strength of being a Gemini is the fact that Gemini is, as they say, a two-bodied sign. It can be in two places at once. Uh, or, you know, as you know, Marilyn Monroe said when she was asked about what it was like to being a Gemini, being, you know, well, she said it was like being, I think, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, was it in the same per in the same body? You know, you can be two people at once and with a, with these two aspects for Gemini, it's about being optimistic and pessimistic at the same time, not seeing the, the seeing one as being one or the other it's not being bipolar bipolar of course again must I've, I've used the word bipolar before in this video 
and to draw another sign. Uh, but when I say bipolar, I'm absolutely not using it in a clinical sense. I'm not using it in a sense of whatever the um, <laughs> whatever the American Psychiatric Association's diagnostic manual. I'm not talking about it like that. I'm talking about it just in common language. You know, but but my understanding of bipolar is you move from one pole to another pole, but what we have to what you have to do here gemini is to is to be both poles at the same time and to accept that both poles the the pole of super pessimism and the pole of super optimism you have to you have to be both at the same time because if you go for one or the other you're going to be wrong and if you can integrate them then i think that uh you can give yourself um, great strength and you will be taking on board um, the, the fundamental thing going on right now and you can move into the centre of things as someone who actually understands how complicated the times that we're living really are. Really are. And, uh, you know, with understanding comes, I suppose, sanity and you know with sanity you know then you're going to be in a position to actually do something cancer you are it is sort of a stage cancer where you may feel that you're moving from sort of one place to another place so in that sense, you might feel a little bit unsettled and you might want not want to commit yourself to one thing or another. And I think that is absolutely fine. Uh, you, you do not have to, um, you, you don't have to make big commitments at the moment. Um, you know, you may feel that there are just a few things that perhaps need to be sorted out, some loose ends to be tied, but then you're ready to move into something else. And I think that uh, you accept to an, to an extent that you have to do things other people's way. Not entirely, but you do have to take, take into account outside pressures. You know, they do matter. And... It may be that you actually have to be of service, perhaps at the beginning of the day. And, you know, I'm, I'm not when I say being of service, I, I don't mean that you're being exploited or anything. It's just that you just may feel at the beginning of the day that there's just something that just has to be done. Um, it may be that someone needs your help and you know this is a reminder that you know right at the beginning of the day especially if you're in sort of asia australia new zealand there is actually a um a grand trine there's a grand trine between the moon sun and charon and you know the sun is trine charon the moon is trine the sun the moon is trine charon so it's it's all it's all there and so at the beginning of the day and especially if you're if you're east australia new zealand asia then you may feel that there's just something you have to do to be of assistance to be of service and it won't be as difficult as it seems just just by just being there for someone um, helping someone deal with whatever issues they have to deal with you can uh, certainly i think make a big difference so be on the lookout for that opportunity at at the beginning of the day regardless of where your time zone is but i think it's going to be sp particularly the case if if you are in australasia or asia and as the day progresses i think cancer there are going to be people that you have to accept 
I mean, accept that they, you have to accept that they have some kind of influence and, and that can't really be helped. And so don't feel that you can entirely ignore another person's influence. But at the same time, you don't want to be overwhelmed by it. But uh, you can maybe learn from someone. If, if, you, if you look at what their role is in your life and how you accept that role, and you, you might just see that uh, someone who you thought was unimportant you know, may actually have a significant impact on you and, a, and an impact which in the end could turn out to be quite beneficial. And continuing on the theme of other people, I I think that some people really are under a lot of pressure and they don't really know how to respond. Um, you know, and even people who appear to be quite powerful. So it's, it's, you know, it's easy to be overwhelmed by powerful people. But if you actually look at how powerful people are behaving, then you can start to see their their insecurity and their hesitancy and perhaps even their weaknesses. And this applies to powerful people who you have to engage with, you know, whether it's, I don't know, older family members perhaps, or it could be politicians, officials, bureaucrats. And you, you just see how these people, you, you just look at these people, even if they seem very formal and they've got a role, perhaps they're on the other side of a glass window, you can still see their vulnerabilities and you can still see the pressure and tension that they're under. And that, that may be a situation in which you can manipulate it, you, but you can, you know, you can manipulate things. So if you can start to see someone's weaknesses, you know, even if this person seems to be in a much stronger position than you, once you start to see the weaknesses, I think cancer, that you may actually be able to use these weaknesses in your favor. You don't, necessarily have to do it in a malign way or a malicious way but uh, you do have to think about your own interests I mean every cancer has to think about their own interests so if you find yourself in a situation where at first you don't feel you're in control because someone else seems to have the power and you might feel that there's nothing you can do just take the time to analyze things and to look at what people are saying looking at their look at their body language and if you listen to what, to what they're saying if you look at their body language it will occur to you in that sensitive cancerian way that you're dealing with someone who is not as strong as they appear on the surface and they do they yeah they do have very real weaknesses and in certain situations they may actually be in a weaker position than you. So through your sensitivity, you may be able to reframe the power balance. And so you might have thought you're in a bad position, but when you really analyze it, when you really look at it, you actually are in a much stronger position than you realize. And that means today, Cancer, that I would hope that you have a growing sense of your own power because I think your power today is very, very real but it needs to be recognised. Leo. Leo, you are going to have a day when there may be certain obligations. You just may feel that there are some things that just have to be done. And it's not about fitting in with the consensus. The consensus doesn't matter, Leo. The, the consensus should be of no concern to you. You instead have to do what is right. And indeed, what is right for you. And that means, in this case, I think, being 
an individual. Very important to be an individual and to think outside the box. And if you get criticism for what you're doing, then that shouldn't bother you. Now, it might, might still bother you. you know, I suppose as a Leo, you like getting praise and attention. You don't want, well, you, you're going to get attention, I think. But in terms of praise, you, you, yeah, you like to be praised. You don't want to get criticism. And you just might feel that you have to do something that is um, just a bit risky. I don't mean risky in the sort of terms of your, uh, for example, physical and financial well-being, but just something which makes you stand out. And it may be, Leo, that you have to do something to address a wrong. Something has been done wrong. Uh, someone has been treated badly, perhaps. And I'm not necessarily talking about you being treated badly. Someone has been treated badly. And as a result of that, Leo, it just might seem clear to you that you actually have to go and do something about it. And that means potentially um, going out on a limb. But, I mean, it's okay because you're doing the right thing. And if you're doing the right thing in the long term, in the long term, you know, what can hurt you? Because it's it's all about if we do what's right. If we do what's right, then we are doing what the universe wants, and we are aligning ourselves with the universe. And Leo, you should not be afraid of explaining yourself, because Mercury has now moved back into your sign, and so with Mercury moving back into your own sign. I think that's going to give you, in a way, a new confidence. A new confidence that you are in the right and that you can explain yourself. Now, that doesn't mean to say you're always going to be in the right. We always need to have a certain amount of humility, you know, especially when Mercury moves into Leo. You know, we do need to accept perhaps a bit of criticism as always, that's nothing wrong with criticism. But with Mercury moving into Leo, uh, be proud in terms of what you believe in and especially your sense of right and wrong. Because I think at the moment, Leos do have a very strong sense of right and wrong. And if someone questions your moral compass, then you can give as good, you can give as, good as you get. And... I think in many cases your explanations and your your self-defense of your stance is going to be extremely effective. And you know, I should make it clear that right now Leos are able to bring to bear an enormous and transformative power if they so wish. And that's not just because the sun is in Leo. Yeah, the sun is your ruler. It's in Leo. It works very well in Leo. But it's not just because of that. It's because of the way the sun relates to the to the overall horoscope. I mean, if you want, I don't want to get into jargon, but you know, the jargon. But the sun is aspecting the Mars Pluto midpoint. If you're interested, and so Mars Pluto is about bringing to bear enormous power, really able to make things happen through a transformative turn. So perhaps it's not about gradual change, it's about sudden change. And it's that sudden change, Leo, that you can bring about. So, Leo, I think, you know, you get the impression now that you are strong. And you are strongly, you are strongly positioned to make things happen. And I don't think you'll have any problems um, articulating your opinions. And yeah, if there's anything wrong with the world, if there are any injustices out there, 
then I think you can go some way towards sorting them out or or perhaps at the very least making people aware of them. Virgo. There are some things perhaps, Virgo, which don't have to be said or at least maybe no longer have to be said. You know, you, you, you've you said already what's on your mind, I think. You, you've, you've said as much as you need to say and perhaps now you can just hold back and perhaps engage in a process of reconsideration you know you you probably got it right 90 percent right but there's still some areas where you need to reconsider and you know a, a lot of this is connected with the fact that mercury which is a planet that is very special to virgos is going retrograde and so when mercury is retrograde uh it is a time for reconsideration and when mercury is retrograde leaving your sign which is what's just happened mercury has left virgo has gone back into the previous sign of leo mercury will return to virgo don't worry it hasn't gone forever it will come back uh, when does it come back i suppose just just to remind you when mercury comes back mercury will come back into your sign on september the september the 9th i think so it, it comes back what about three weeks something like that so for the moment it is a time i think to reconsider and not to feel that you have to explain yourself anymore you know you've you've done your bit and at the same time virgo it may occur to you that actually things are starting to slow down that it's not going to be easy to get things done, even if people have made promises. You know, people have made may have made commitments, they've told you they're going to be there for you, but you can't rely on that. And I think you may find that a lot of people, including you yourself, actually want to stay put. Stay put even when circumstances are trying to move you forward. Um, And that might sound quite an unnatural position to be in. If circumstances want to move you forward, then you need to move forward, don't you? You shouldn't just stay where you are. But I think, Virgo, you and other people are going to, to an extent, want to stay where you are. You're not going to want to go with the flow. Um, Maybe that's okay for the moment. But uh, you can't stay in one place forever. You can't stay in one mindset forever. And again, it's not just about you. It's about others. Other people are perhaps even more strongly embedded in wherever they are than, than you are. And so just uh, short term, perhaps accept the situation. But... Uh, Longer term, something does have to be done. Though a good reason perhaps why today you shouldn't be making your mind up is not just the fact that Mercury is retrograde and it's um, moving back into Leo. It is the fact that Mercury uh, is making a quincunx to Neptune. So Neptune, Mercury did make a quincunx to Pluto a day or two ago. Now Mercury is making a a quincunx to Neptune. And, you know, that also means that Mercury is aspecting, is making an opposition to the, to the Neptune-Pluto midpoint. So with Mercury, quincunx, Neptune, you know, there are things out there which are really very confusing. You know, Virgos like everything to be sorted out. They like everything to be straightforward. Uh, that is that is how the typical Virgo sees the world. I say the typical Virgo because there are always going to be exceptions. But you like things to be, yeah, properly organised and perhaps properly labelled. 
and you know what want to know what's going to happen next and you want to plan you want to schedule but with mercury quincunx neptune it may all have to go out of a window because things are happening which may which are actually very disruptive and people are not going to be clear uh, they're not going to be be open and honest about what they're going to do next i'm not saying they're going to be actually consciously deceptive but things just happen and you just have to to accept that and so it's probably a bad time virgo to be making plans and but as i've already suggested that's not really such a good idea you just need to i think be open-minded and not commit yourself to anything you know especially on an intellectual level and don't be taken in by other people's promises okay sometimes people do keep their promises but at the moment that certainly can't be can't be taken for granted so i think you can see virgo the overall picture today it's perhaps not easy but if you can just accept things not feel you have to say anything not you have to not not feel you have to do anything not feel that you have to move anywhere and just accept that there is a certain chaotic edge to what is happening then uh, i think you'll be okay libra today libra it might be a good idea if you were to take it easy you, know, you might feel that there are things you're supposed to be doing but is it, is it really necessary and do you have the information you need or and indeed do you have the motivation i'm not convinced you do i think that uh, today is a day when you're not going to be fully able to apply and assert yourself and I think that there could be a certain tendency on your part to sort of have you know, somewhat foggy thinking. You know, we all have foggy thinking at some at, at times. And I think that today, Libra, yeah, you've got a good imagination, no doubt about that. But your imagination, I don't think, is going to be particularly helpful in terms in terms of making sense of the world in the here and now you know there's just a certain danger libra that you just go flying off on on some tangent and one tangent leads onto another tangent and you just uh, potentially end up getting going nowhere you know that's only the case if you're if you make the attempt to be very focused and you think it's important to be businesslike and to have you know to be well organized if you make those kind of efforts and you think it's then sure then things um things might go awry and it just may may take just a long time to get anything done and even then you just may decide that it's just uh not really worth it so i would have said plan your day accordingly or indeed perhaps don't plan your day accordingly i mean plans are there simply to be disrupted isn't, isn't that the case and i think that as the day progresses you're going to have an increasing need to do things that are just simple things that you understand if you understand something really well and you're dealing with tasks that are simply uncomplicated um, don't require intellectual gymnastics then i think that you'll do uh, you'll do a good job now one thing that you perhaps have to be very wary of today is other people and other people are just going to be difficult to deal with and it may be just be it's because they themselves are 
confused. I mean, I think you're quite confused or you have a capacity to be confused today. And same goes with other people. Other people just don't know how to respond. It's it's a very stop-go kind of day. Yeah, For everyone, it's a stop-go kind of day. But I think you are going to be particularly aware of this stop-go nature in terms of people's behaviour. People may sort of swing from sort of enthusiasm, thinking that it's all go, and then suddenly uh, suddenly looking at all the roadblocks, and then it's stop, go, stop, go. You know, and it, it could drive you crazy. And, uh, I mean, obviously not literally crazy, but if you if you really do things other people's way, if you put yourself at other people's mercy and you're always in a state of responding to another person, yeah, as, as can happen with Librans. Libra, Libra is a very sociable sign, but you could just be completely confused and you know you just have to go in lots of different directions and yeah, and you end up going nowhere. So maybe Libra, it's a time when you need to be as self-sufficient as possible you need to put yourself into a situation where you are making your own decisions or even ideally where you don't have to make any decisions at all and then you can uh, start to assert some control over the situation and if you do have to do with, deal with people, I suppose everyone has to deal with people at, at some level. Maybe it's people like, you know, partners, close friends. If you have to deal with people, then take them seriously up to a point, but don't take them so seriously that you have to do things their way. Just perhaps listen to them and try and understand their confusion. I don't think that you're going to be able to really provide any useful feedback because it just may feel that you're dealing with just powerful forces. I won't say powerful people, but people who at least think they're powerful. And they may it just may feel that they're a law unto themselves. So I, I think that is that's really it. I think that is the broad message. And I would also say that it's important to be as absolutely sane as possible today. Really sane. Um, you don't want any distractions. You don't want. You don't want to have your mind filled with things that are not necessary. You don't want to, and you don't really want to expose yourself to other people's worries. Now, I, I know it's nice to listen to people's worries and to be concerned by by people's worries and to give people feedback and try to solve other people's worries. But today, no, I don't think so. I, I think that uh, you should uh, keep a distance from people's problems and resist the temptation to really uh, tie yourself up with them. So I don't know, if you're a Libran psychotherapist, maybe you should just have a day off. Or if you're just involved in any form of counselling and then just have the day off. Uh, okay, you've always got to make time for your family. But aside from that, I, I think that uh, there are grounds, perhaps, Libra, for just being a little bit selfish. Scorpio, you are in the middle of things, really, Scorpio, aren't you? You know, you might try your hardest not to be involved, but I don't think you can help it. And you are aware of opportunities for sure, but you're also aware of everything that can go wrong. And you're not entirely sure how to how to respond. And it, it's all rather contradictory. So, you know, yesterday, Scorpio, I was talking about Mars conjunct Jupiter. And I, you know, I suppose I was saying that with Mars conjunct Jupiter, you you had the chance of doing a lot of things and you wanted to do a lot of things and perhaps you had a certain sense of optimism i think you still have a certain sense of optimism um, and you know i was also suggesting scorpio you don't go too far into yourself 
because Mars, you know, that Mars Jupiter conjunction can be a little bit obsessive. You need to go into yourself a little bit just to tap into your own power, but then you need to go out. That's what I said yesterday. And now today things are just getting more confusing because you know Mars is starting to make a square to Saturn. Okay, Mars is you will have been feeling this Mars square Saturn for some days, but you're you're really feeling that now. And it's about it's about pressure and feeling that yeah sure something has to happen you have to do something but at the same time you may wonder be wondering what you can do and you may feel that there are circumstances out there which could really be be pressurizing you and it may be difficult to know how to respond and so what do you do about this situation you know do you allow yourself to be uh, squeezed uh, until you know something has to actually give i mean there may be something almost quite explosive about this um when you're dealing with two things which is just so completely contradictory well scorpio it is important you don't exaggerate i mean scorpios can exaggerate and, you know, they can just regard a situation as being hopeless, that there's nothing that can be done, that you just want to, I don't know, in the end, just hide under a rock. That's that's a standard safe Scorpio approach, isn't it? I, I mean, if you take the view that one of the symbols of the scorpion is the snake and hiding under a rock is what snakes do when, it, when it's all too complicated. Um, but... Perhaps you need to go a little bit further than that. I mean, sorry, when I say further than that, you perhaps need to be um, a little more proactive. So, you know, in the jargon, you know, as Mars is halfway between the conjunction of Jupiter and the square of Saturn, we can say that Mars is on the Jupiter-Saturn midpoint. And so that says something about you. And you just feeling the pressure for sure but perhaps what you have to do is you know make sense of the pressure i suppose it's like that kind of hydroelectric pressure it's like boiling water perhaps and you boiling water can be incredibly destructive but boiling water can also be used to power turbines and so those Scorpio turbines need to start moving because once the turbines move, you can you get electricity. And so perhaps you need to regard yourself as being some kind of um, kind some kind of power station. You know, you you you're the you're in a position to take these dramatic forces of nature and turn them into something that is actually useful or at the very least is understandable and so yeah you're in the center of things and it's so easy to be overwhelmed you know when i was talking to when i was talking to aries i was referring to this concept of sort of tectonic plates you know like the san andreas fault and um and I was saying this because, you know, Aries has Mars as its ruling planet. Scorpio also has Mars as its ruling planet. And you think of, you may be thinking about like, you know, the Superman films. Was it, was it, I don't know. I, it's a long time since I saw a Superman film, but wasn't there a scene in one of the Superman films where Superman was literally trying to hold apart two tectonic plates? And I said that that's a good image for Aries. I think actually it's a good Aries image for Scorpio as well. And you are in the middle of things, but you do have a great deal of power. You, you have insight. And perhaps because you have insight and perhaps also an awareness of risk. You know, you don't, you, you, you understand how much risk is actually possible. And perhaps because you've got a risk, an awareness of risk, you can maybe do things which other people won't 
and get involved with things which just other people just find to be just uh, too complicated. And in the end, Scorpio, perhaps you can find a resolution to the issue. And you know, going back to that image of a snake hiding under a rock, I don't think that is actually an appropriate image. I mean, I think it kind of suits how you might like to be, but I don't think it's a, it's a model of appropriate behavior for you. I think that you do have to be seen. You do have to make an impact. I do think that is really important. And if you make an, if you try to make an impact, if you try to direct the world around you, you, you perhaps try to um, organize things and uh, take control. I think that you actually will be well rewarded. For one thing, you're going to have, you actually have quite a lot of power and actually, actually you have a lot of transformative power and also you're very aware of what is wrong. You know, Scorpios have a great sense of justice. Uh, of all the 12 signs, I think perhaps Scorpios have the most powerful uh, sense of justice, a really powerful sense of justice. And if someone is a victim of unjust injustice or is is hurting, I think, Scorpio, you, you will, in a very sort of public way, I think, be able to do something about it and be, perhaps be able to transform the situation in, in everyone's benefit. Sagittarius, you can still feel the conjunction between Mars and Jupiter, which was which was yesterday, uh, but it's, that Mars Jupiter conjunction is still it's 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 very much with us, and it's very much a feature of you know, what is happening at the moment, and the Mars Jupiter conjunction means that uh, you do feel energized and at the same time you know with the moon moving through the last degrees of Sagittarius you may feel it's a time to really make something happen perhaps you know you have a, a vision you're optimistic about something and you feel that now now is the time really to do it but you probably haven't got all the time in the world because the moon does move into capricorn at some stage you know moon could go into capricorn as early as you know 10 to 11 in the morning even earlier if you're in um, alaska or hawaii if you're in australia or new zealand it's fine you've got moon and sagittarius is uh, uh all day long and uh, but uh, in India as well not just Australia New Zealand in fact uh, Asia Australia New Zealand moon is in Sagittarius all day so perhaps if you're in Australia Australia, New Zealand Asia there's not such a hurry but if you're certainly if you're in the Americas you do need to hurry up There's, there's just something you need to resolve and if you've got some sort of idea which is, uh, you know, very optim- optimistic, and you want to start work on it, and you want to interest people in it, now may be, may be the time to do it. Because if you wait too long, and the moon moves into Capricorn, that does create a change. And I think the thing about the moon moving from Sagittarius to Capricorn, and why it's important, is this: is that yesterday there was Mars conjunct Jupiter. Tomorrow, you've got Mars square Saturn. So it's like, while the moon is in Sagittarius, this is a sign which has a certain sympathy with Jupiter. That's perhaps a time when, there's, when the Mars-Jupiter conjunction will hold sway. But as the moon moves into Capricorn, that's when the Mars-Saturn square will hold sway. So... There will be perhaps a big change as that happens, and yeah, that so that means if you're in Los Angeles, moon moves into Sagittarius. So I think it's at uh, nine. 
let's get this right, I think it's at uh, 9 minutes to 11 in the morning. And so, uh, you know, get up early, you've got stuff to do. Um, if if you're in New York, it's you can, you can wait until 10 to 2 in the afternoon, it's not so bad. Uh, if you're in Western Europe, you've got all day, at least until the evening. So it kind of depends. And so Sagittarius, I think a sense of timing is right. Sorry, a sense of timing is going to be very important today. And so don't be lazy. Um, if, you, if you've got something that, that really matters to you and you want to get it off the ground, then, then now is, I think, very much the time to do it. And you, you can't, you, you, you can't waste, uh, you can't waste time. It's absolutely not a time for time for um, wasting time. Absolutely not. And then, uh, you know, as the day continues, as the moon moves into Capricorn, in fact, before the moon moves into Capricorn, you are reminded of the fact that Jupiter is square Saturn. Now that Jupiter square Saturn is exact on Monday, but you're feeling it. I, I'm pretty sure you're feeling it. Uh, yeah. Did I mention it yesterday? Probably, but Jupiter square Saturn, you're just aware of what could be holding you back. And, you know, what could be holding you back? It, it may be some fundamental domestic family issues which absolutely have to be considered but are they going to be useful i mean maybe not and in terms of other people there may be a there may be actually a clear distinction between members of your family and other people uh maybe friends associates whatever there, there's going to be a difference there and i think there's perhaps is going to be changing priorities so you feel that there are people out there you may not know very well but you'd like to know them better you may want to see what they've got to offer but if you give them too much time you may feel that other people who you know better like your family may be you know you may they may i don't know be jealous maybe they may feel they want all the time they want all you know but I think that you perhaps have to get the balance right, Sagittarius. You know, you 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 know lots of different people, and you can't give all your time to people to people that you know very well, like your family, because because you know that would kind of be a shame. I mean, it's great to give you to give your family your time, but uh, if they take up all your time, then you're just going to be resentful, and you know you you do have to consider. Yeah, you have to consider the wider world. And talking about relationships, it seems that uh, someone's had a change of mind or someone is in the process of having a change of mind. Um, you know, and, and even a change of attitude. Perhaps someone used to be quite, uh, quite logical and you expected someone to be quite logical, and then suddenly they're becoming more um, set in their ways, uh, somehow sort of more more proud, more focused on themselves, not wanting criticism anymore. Yeah, so someone who you could criticise, who you could have a constructive engagement with not so long ago, now... Uh, that can't happen anymore or it doesn't seem as if that's going to happen anymore uh, because they feel that they have to really stand up for themselves and they don't want to be contradicted. Uh, it's a, perhaps a difficult situation, but I, I don't think there's anything you can do about it or anything you should do about it. Just let people be and you know, try to understand why some people are so into themselves and so into their image it, it seems strange to you but uh, it's a reality that uh, I think Sagittarius that probably you just have to accept Capricorn so Capricorn the moon is 
starting to move into your sign. You know, as I've been saying over the course of this video, that does to an extent depend on your time zone. But uh, over the course of the day and into tomorrow, the moon moves from Sagittarius into Capricorn. And I think that by and large, that is, that is a good thing. Uh, you like having Capricorn in your sign. There is a feeling of familiarity. And familiarity is really so important because, you know, at the moment, you know, astrologically Capricorn, there's just been a lot going on. And you may have felt somewhat alienated from it all. You may just have not felt that you just weren't part of it and you didn't fully understand what was going on. Um, you tried to understand and uh, it, it's, it wasn't like you didn't have any power, but it was just a situation where you had to just constantly try to work out what was appropriate and it was perhaps hard work. But now that the moon is moving into Capricorn, I do think that uh, things are making more sense and you can you you understand people better and i think you understand yourself better and i think you understand your strengths and weaknesses better and at the same time i think that uh, you realize some of your responsibilities particularly to other people you know some people are quite reliant on you and they do want your support and maybe not just your maybe maybe it doesn't have to be even support maybe your presence your presence can be very important over the next few days and also you seem to understand things that uh, maybe other people don't and you know we've got this run up to Mars making a square to Saturn so Mars makes a square to Saturn tomorrow so obviously Saturn is your ruler and so Mars is square Saturn and that sounds a little bit grim, but perhaps because Saturn is is your ruler, you understand it. Yeah, Mars square Saturn can be a very frustrating influence, and it can mean that sort of people just don't know what's happening. Uh, they find that their plans start going nowhere, and things take take up more and more of their energy, and the whole thing gets exhausting. But you understand it. It's like you've seen it before. It will happen again and it will happen again in the future. And what we're experiencing now is just part of the human experience. And as a Capricorn, you're, you know, you're quite down to earth about it. And you perhaps have the ability to explain what's going on. I mean, you, you can see it, you understand that there are certain cycles, you know, you have gr cycles of growth and you have cycles of contraction. And Capricorn, I think you're very aware of this cycle and how this cycle develops. And perhaps you can, in some respects, transmit this cycle. Now, this Mars-Saturn square is not without its problems for you. And I think perhaps one problem you might have with Mars moving to a square of Saturn, and I'll be talking more about this tomorrow, is that with Mars square Saturn, you might just feel that certain things, maybe certain people, are sort of messing with your boundaries. You may feel that they're going too far, and you may feel that you need to kind of warn them off or perhaps they're just saying and doing things that you just find annoying you understand why they're doing it you also understand what kind of damage may result and if someone is being annoying i think that you understand that in the long run nothing bad is going to happen but it's still an annoyance and so capricorn it's just going to be very important that you decide how you respond to this annoyance i mean do you go over the top or do you just uh, let things be you know sometimes the best way to respond to annoying people and annoying situations is to do nothing because if you respond 
you just add fuel to the fire and so by just uh, just observing being mildly irritated but not overreacting Capricorn that just might be the best thing to do and uh, it means you're not giving power to a negative situation because if you give power to a negative situation it just gets worse and worse but you know that Capricorn you, you understand that and you're you're not given to exaggeration and I, and I think that sort of level-headed approach uh, will serve you very well Aquarius Aquarius you like Capricorn have to deal with a square aspect between Mars and Saturn. Now that square aspect between Mars and Saturn is tomorrow. It's not today. But I still think that you're going to be picking up on it. So with Mars square Saturn, it, it may be that there is a somewhat irritating influence and yeah you may find someone annoying and you might be rushing to judgment I mean it's easy to rush to judgment but I don't think you should so if something is happening that you don't like or you don't approve of that doesn't mean to say it's a bad thing. It may be that different people have different paths. And just because something seems stupid to you doesn't mean it is stupid. And it certainly doesn't mean that it's stupid to another person. So I think that Capricorn, you have to, as far as is possible, to accept other people for what they are and even if they're doing something that you just really don't approve of it, it it doesn't mean it's wrong so an open-minded approach uh aquarius did i just call you call you capricorn sorry if i did an open-minded approach aquarius is um is going to really matter and at the same time Aquarius, you you need to think about yourself. I mean, it's all very well thinking about what other people are doing and what other people are doing or not doing in terms of their creativity. But, you know, what about your own creativity? Uh, that's what matters. Uh, forget the rest of the world. Forget other people. It's about you. And what are you doing? And actually, if you're honest with yourself, Aquarius it may actually be the case that you may be um, not making the most of what you have. I mean, you've done well. No one's doubting that you're a very talented and clever person. But maybe you could be even more talented and even more clever if you were to finish one more thing. There's one thing that you're you're not addressing, you're ignoring. And now's the time perhaps when you need to look at it again. It's about taking a skill that you have, and it may be quite a mundane skill, so sort of a skill that not in itself is special, but through transformation you can turn it into something completely amazing. And, you know, it may be very trivial. I don't know. You may, for example, um, I don't know, using a technological example, you, you may be very good at, or you may have some ability to use a, a piece of software on your computer, but in a fairly standard way, in a sort of regular way, and it's nothing special. But if you were to just really look at what you were doing, then you might make it really special, make something amazing. Or it could be some facility you have in terms of business. You know, you 
in the past you perhaps have had some some success in terms of making money out of something or or using a, an ability in a commercial way you perhaps and you've kind of forgotten about it and you haven't put any energy into it but if you were to look at it again uh, with everything you've got then you might realize that you've got something that is quite unique to you so it just may be just abilities you have that you just take for granted and, and I think there are a couple of these abilities and I, and I don't want to just focus on business or your software you have to on your computer just you know use your imagination what are those abilities whatever it is I don't know it might be uh, might be gardening uh, it might be metal work art whatever um, whatever that ability is that you haven't taken fully seriously and if you were to absolutely focus everything you've got on it at the moment and not just today but you might find that you've really got something special to offer um, okay not you don't even have to offer it it can be something about you and your own personal satisfaction so so perhaps it's it's then thinking not about what other people are doing and not other not doing you may be even doing that too because you know that you should be looking at yourself but it's easier to focus on other people it's easier to be critical about other people when the real work needs to be done in terms of you and making sure that you are absolutely making the most of your God-given gifts. Pisces. So Pisces, we had or we have a conjunction between Mars and Jupiter and that Mars-Jupiter conjunction was exact yesterday and it's it it might have been a bit tough um, you know I know it's supposed to be good a Mars Jupiter conjunction but it can just be too much of a good thing just having a lot of energy or there being a lot of energy flying around but really not exactly knowing what to do with it it, it and it might just have felt that it, it was out of control or it was just something you you didn't really want to bother with because perhaps it was uh, just too much but now we have a situation where the Mars Jupiter conjunction is still very much there but Mars is now moving towards a square of Saturn and in fact technically we've got Mars semi-square the Jupiter Saturn midpoint as you move from one aspect to another aspect and that aspect between Mars and Saturn which which as I said is exact tomorrow I think you're feeling it today very much so and I think that for many Pisans there is a certain sense of frustration uh, it's just difficult to get things done and that's going to especially be the case if you take a single-minded approach if you take the view that there's only one way of doing things and you've just got to keep moving if you keep doing that and you keep moving then you might just find that you're you're just getting nowhere because you just haven't been able to consider alternative approaches and it, it and that is important and you need to firstly start with your basic structure you have a structure and you've you've structured your life in a particular way and that's great and it may feel as if there's only one way of defending that structure and now that structure is perhaps being challenged a bit and so you're perhaps going into defense mode but in a process, nothing is happening, nothing is moving. It's just the pressure is going up. And this is a somewhat un unnatural position for a Pisces because, you know, Pisceans need to have some flow. And I think it might be at the moment that you feel that some of your flow is perhaps being 
interrupted, that you can't do everything that you would like to do. And so perhaps, Pisces, you need to consider the possibility that you need a new set of resources. So, you know, what would those resources be? Well, don't underestimate the possibility of finding social resources. I think it's a time, Pisces, when other people can be surprising. And, you know, once you involve yourself in some kind of cooperative enterprise, then the surprises can happen. So it's not just about working with people in a casual way. Once you can actually start to create some kind of union, some kind of um, cooperative unit, then there can be a change. Then you may actually be surprised by what another person has to offer. So maybe it's a time, Pisces, when you need to sort of work in a team. I don't say in a partnership, perhaps more in a team. I mean, it can be in a partnership, but it just that perhaps on your own, you haven't got all the resources. And when I say a team in a partnership, I'm not I'm probably not talking about members of your family. I don't, I'm not convinced that members of your family are always going to be helpful. Some members of your family could actually be, um, be very irritating at the moment. Um, They might be quite selfish, quite demanding and uh, inconsiderate. So uh, don't be entirely focused on your family. Just, just look at, all your contacts, look at all your social resources and really consider who might be in a position to help you and and don't make assumptions. You know, one person is one thing today and they're another thing tomorrow. Um, there is a change uh, in, in, t- in terms of some people's attitudes um, It just may be that some people who were actually very helpful and very useful very recently, but now they've, now they're perhaps taking themselves too seriously. You don't want people around at the moment who are taking themselves too seriously, uh, because if someone is taking themselves too seriously, that means that their ego is involved. And once you've got people who are wrapped up in their ego and how important they are, they're probably of not much use to you. Uh, you need to perhaps be a little bit selfish. Ask what kind of use can someone be? And does someone have an attitude? And if someone has an attitude, and if, then you really don't want to have anything to do with them. It doesn't matter how well you know them. Uh, people with attitudes should definitely be be avoided. And uh, really, that's it. I mean, it's it is a difficult time, not just for you, Pisces. It's it's just that you know we've got we've had Mars conjunct Jupiter, we've got Mars square Saturn tomorrow, and so it's it is difficult. I'm I'm thinking that uh, you know tomorrow, although we've got the exact Mars square Mars square Saturn tomorrow, I think there's a chance that tomorrow might actually be easier for you tomorrow because. You know, the moon will be sort of established in Capricorn and it will be making a trine to Venus. And I think that that moon trine Venus is something that you can, you, you'll be able to use in a constructive sense. But, uh, you know, right now, uh, Pisces, uh, you just need to just accept it's a complicated situ- situation. Also accept that some people can help you deal with this complicated situation and that they um, can just make things very different, but you have to make the right choices. So, yeah, that's another thing today in terms of the people you're with. Just don't uh, don't hang out with anyone, and certainly don't hang out with people who have an attitude. And 
Those are my forecasts for the 12 signs. And now I'm going to look at today from the view of the I Ching. So I asked the question, what is Thursday going to be like for those watching the I Ching section of this video? And the first hexagram I got was number 34, which is the power of the great. So with the power of the great, you know, there is this implication that there are powerful forces out there. <laughs> and indeed, there certainly are, because you know, as we know, we've, we've, we are in between a conjunction between Mars and Jupiter and a square between Mars and Saturn, very powerful forces. Jupiter and Saturn are the two great chronocrators, the rulers of time. And they're very much telling us about the pace and beat of the time in which we're living. And the power of the great, this hexagram, is reminding us that we need to be in tune with the times in which we live. It's an absolute waste of time being out of tune. How can you possibly be out of tune with these huge forces? You, how can you even consider trying to go against the trend? You can't. And it's just so important at the moment that we are absolutely in harmony with whatever is going on, going on around us. That That harmony is absolutely crucial and it's a situation where we can't force things and uh, that that really matters um, we, we're tempted to force things you know because Mars is conjunct Jupiter we've got we feel we've got energy and Mars is going to be square Saturn. We've got a frustration. We've got a block. It's holding us back. We want to do something. And uh, it's so tempting. But if we try to use force, it's just going to get absolutely nowhere. Um, so whatever you're up against, whatever restrictions seem to be holding you up, then you know, you you need to work with them. You actually need to see how the restrictions around you are just signs of the times. This is the world in which you live. Now, that doesn't mean to say that you just have to put up with them and be miserable. It's, it's just accepting the scenery. This is the scenery. Um, you, you, you can't change the scenery. You may regard the scenery as being not ideal but then you were born at this time in history uh, for a purpose isn't that right um, you weren't born in the 18th century uh, you were born in the I suppose probably the 20th century some of you might uh, perhaps have been born in the 21st century but this is a time you're living in and so you can't change that. And you have to work with the material in front of you. And so don't feel that you should be trying to move the scenery because it just can't be done. And yes, the, the scenery changes, but the scenery changes to the beat of higher forces. That right at the moment, we can symbolize those higher forces with you know, Jupiter, square, Saturn. Mars hitting that Jupiter square Saturn. That's those are the times you're living in. That's the material you've got. And as that's the material you've got, you'll be able to make the most of it because that's why you were put on the planet when you were put on the planet. And you know, there will be a time when I think when you feel that you are completely stuck. The, the I Ching has this imagery of, I think, of a goat that's stuck in a hedge. 
can't go back, can't go forward. And that's so descriptive, I think, of what we've got with going back to the Jupiter-Saturn square, Mars conjunct Jupiter wants to go forward, Mars square, you know, con- optimistic, let's go forward, Mars conjunct Jupiter, Mars square Saturn, this is too much, let's go back, and you can't do either. And so it is quite frustrating. But the I Ching says, well, you know, it's not actually unfortunate, we just have to go with the flow, we have to accept it, accept the situation as it is. And it's not about getting out of the hedge we're all in the hedge <laughs> that, that's the way it is and we just have to work with the hedge not work against the hedge and i think this is uh you know further emphasized by the by the by the hexagram that follows and the following hexagram which because we've got two moving lines of the power of a great on the power of a great we move to a different hexagram and the hexagram we move to is hexagram number 38 which is opposition and this is a reminder that we are at some level at odds with what's around us i think we're, we're actually at odds with some of the people around us we don't actually feel comfortable in the situation that we're in how, but anyway how can we feel too comfortable you know, as we're coming up to this Mars square Saturn, you know, it's, it is tough. And we might feel that someone is, or a situation is really restricting us, is just preventing us from exercising our freedom of action. And we just may feel that what we can do is we can just change the situation. So if we're feeling that we, we lack freedom in one place, we might then think that if we go to another place, We'll have more freedom. But, you know, the grass is always greener, isn't it? And so if we try to free ourselves, and even if we appear to free, our, if, we, if we appear to succeed in freeing ourselves, we just move someone somewhere else uh, and the situation just repeats. And so it is about, I think, accepting the situation. We can't get on with everyone. Some people are going to be cramping our style and we are strong. We can feel our strength. The previous hexagram was the power of the great. Uh, You know, it's, you know, it's like, you know, we are sort of a raw force. And I think we're compared with a ram that wants to get out of its enclosure um, and wants to go, go and go into, go and do stuff. But, we just have to accept the situation and this you know we we can't be friends of everyone people are going to be holding us back and the more we fight against it the worse it the worse it's going to be and the more restricted we're going to feel so i think that t- today acceptance is going to be very important but you know i, I must emphasize we're not badly placed certainly vis-a-vis other people not at all. Perhaps our advantage is that we understand what's going on, but just other people maybe don't. And uh, one person who does appear to be experiencing a certain amount of frustration is uh, Donald Trump. And I I know I go on and on about Donald Trump, but I just noticed yesterday, I was just noticed this complete wall of negativity about him. Now, I'm not going to say that everything is great for Donald Trump but I what I want to try to understand is you know why why has why is this happening what, is, does is his campaign really really over uh, is it finished is he going to lose in November well these are big questions um, but I think I think we tr- want to try to understand what's happening um, right now I'm not saying that I'm going to be super successful at this task uh, but uh, anyway, let's let's see what we can come up with. And you know, I'm going to go over some stuff that I've already looked at. But uh, so here is Donald Trump's chart. And so Donald Trump, he turned 
he turned 78, didn't he, in... Um, he turned 78 on June 14th. And so here's his chart. So a popular technique, which wasn't popular when I was studying astrology, when I started studying astrology in the 1980s, but I suppose it's become popular, I suppose, since the sort of late 90s, and particularly now, is is perfections and uh, annual rulers and the idea of this 12-year cycle that, you know, if you you, you have perfected signs and and so um you know donald trump if we assume he's born with leo rising i suppose if he was born a few seconds later he'd have virgo rising but if we assume that donald trump has leo rising then uh every 12 years he he, go, he goes into a year covered by leo so when he hit 72 in um, 2018, is that right? Sorry, 72. When was he 72? Yeah, when he hit when he hit 72 in 2018, he would return to to Leo. He would be in a year ruled by Leo, and I suppose you could say that you know the sun uh, rules Leo. So that was the year he was in. So six years later, he's now 78. So he's the sign that sort of covers him and is is now Aquarius, and uh, and that's happened since his birthday, and so I know it looks sixth house, but of course this is a Hellenistic technique, and they use whole sign they they use whole sign houses. I'm not saying I'm an expert on this technique. I'm just pointing this out, and I know that some people have are using. Uh, perfections to try to predict how, what the result of the election is and so the thing about Aquarius for Trump is that Mars he's got Mars in Leo so Mars is opposition Aquarius and the fact that Mars is opposition Aquarius it's in the opposing sign because he's got Mars in Leo and I think that that really does indicate enemies and frustrations and it's kind of not surprising that you know very soon after he turned 78 within just over a month there was an assassination attempt on him his mars is very much an irritation here i think since his um since his birthday and i suppose it's going to last for the whole year so if you're uh uh, if you're not a fan of Trump, you might re- just regard this as just being more of the same. You might even, if you if you want to mix up mix uh, n- new planets, I know that Hellenistic the Hellenistic approach is supposed to be traditional, and you shouldn't be, need to use Pluto. But if you want to use Pluto as well, he's got Mars and Pluto in Leo, and so perhaps those Mars and Pluto in Pluto and Leo are, are are very prominent at the moment for him, and this may this may give a sort of a backdrop some of the problems he's having to deal with and then you've got his his solar return and i've looked at his solar return before before and again i think that uh, trump's solar return is really somewhat difficult uh, so if you look at his you know his solar return for 2024 uh, you know he's got saturn saturn on the mid heaven now, we have to be careful with that. Saturn on the mid-heaven might mean the presidency. It could do. And, and you know, I've looked at solar returns for other presidents, you know, when they have got elected. And some presidents got elected with far worse solar returns than that. So I don't think you can look at the solar return and say, oh, this is a sure sign he's not going to get elected. But still, you can see that Trump has got the moon is opposition, Saturn and it's applying to an opposition of Saturn and uh, it's uh, you know, applying to the opposition of Mercury and he's got Mercury Saturn he's got Mercury Saturn square in his solar return and 
I know that Trump's uh, critics of saying, you know, he's just lying all the time. And I'm not saying that's true, by the way. I'm just saying what his critics are saying. And that, uh, you know, you talk about, you know, with this Elon Musk uh, interview, slurring his words, you know, you could say, well, there's Mercury Saturn. In, there's his Mercury Saturn square. He's not able to communicate in the way he was communicating in 2016. And in 2016, he was able to have these meetings all over the country at a very high pace. But then I suppose he was eight years younger, perhaps. Um, but so Mercury Saturn is perhaps the Mercury Saturn square is, is starting to weigh on him. And uh, in terms of that lunar return and, of course, that moon opposition Saturn, the moon is ruler of the ascendant. So it is a rather difficult lunar return, solar return for this year. And just it may be just you know, what we're seeing and turning to what's happening right now we had this elon musk um interview which i don't know depends who you who you listen to um some people um are saying what a, what a disaster it is and how he was slurring his words and i think that the interview was supposed to go go live at eight o'clock but it went but there was well the trump campus uh, i think elon was saying that there was uh, i don't know some ddos attack um that's one view others might be saying it's just the way x and elon musk have run their are running their servers there is a view about what the reason for that attack reason for that breakdown was but uh let's just have a look at the supposed start time for the interview with um between elon and trump i don't know what location to use so i've just gone for new york if i've got the location wrong you know my apologies so I think we get evidence here when Elon and Musk were having their interview that, that, that they hadn't really consulted an astrologer, had they? I mean, regardless of the ascendant, you have got the moon at 24 Scorpio. Uh, and it's, it's fallen in Scorpio and it's moving to an opposition with Uranus. That's what it is. Moon opposition Uranus. That is just not good. It's just a bad time to have an interview. Things can happen um, like they did with, for whatever reason, why the servers collapsed. And of course, we've also got Mercury retrograde. I wouldn't necessarily read too much into Mercury retrograde because Mercury is going to be retrograde for a long time it's going to be retrograde during the democratic national convention we don't know how that's going to work out and i will be talking about that in a moment but uh, i think you always got to look at the moon when you've when you've got this kind of this, this kind of chart and if we have the ascendant right the moon may be square the maybe maybe square the ascendant but that does not seem to be a um, a fortunate time for Trump, uh, you know, with that moon opposition Uranus. Then how did that interview and a general position of the planets right now, how, how, are they, how are they actually affecting Trump? And so there we've got Trump's chart in the middle and we have got the, uh, the planets right now on the, on the outer wheel. Um, now, Saturn could be a bit of a problem here because at the time of that interview, Saturn was at 17 degrees, 55 Pisces. And so at the moment, you know, when people are, you know, questioning Trump's ability to win, he has got Saturn exactly square his Uranus. And, you know, when you've got a planet like Uranus, um, I tend to regard Uranus as a transpersonal planet. And I I actually think that in many respects, you can do a horoscope without using Uranus because I have a traditional streak in terms of the way I do my charts. And it's, it's especially if you're just an ordinary person like me. Uh, do you need Uranus? I'm not, 
I'm not of any importance in terms of the universe. I'm not a global player. But if you're a global player like Trump, you know, don't forget the universe has decided already whether or not he's going to win or not in November. We're so close to the election that it's already decided one way or the other. And so Trump, in a Trump, you know, like Kamala Harris, is not a human being. They're just a tool of the cosmos. I mean, let's not get personal about it. And because Trump and Kamala Harris, you know, are tools of the cosmos, I, I think that, you know, we can regard that Uranus as being very real, as being an important planet to consider. So if Trump has Saturn, if Saturn is square his Uranus, you know, Uranus is his um, his disruptive power, his ability to... Um, as they say, change the conversation. I hate that phrase, don't you? And that his ability to yeah, be a disruptor, cause chaos and benefit from the chaos. So that's what he's got. But having Saturn square his Uranus, I mean, you, you might even see, which I wouldn't, but some of you might see Uranus as being somehow a, a higher octave of Mercury. I, again, I wouldn't do that, but you could. But perhaps with Saturn square Uranus, part of his power has been completely disrupted. That That's one way of looking at it. Yet, of course, Jupiter is conjunct his Uranus. Jupiter hasn't actually moved on to the conjunction of that Uranus. So at the time of that interview, Jupiter was at 1625 Gemini. Uranus was at 1754 uh, so that's so perhaps this is as bad as it gets as far as Saturn hitting his Uranus. Uranus is Saturn is now going to go retrograde. So that is, the impact of Saturn hitting his Uranus is not going to last for much longer. It's it's peaked. And it pretty much peaked at the Elon at his meeting with Elon Musk. The if you're interested, Jupiter will Jupiter is going to conjunct his Uranus um uh that will happen uh well it's kind of already happening jupiter's <laughs> it's it's already there <laughs> pretty much today jupiter's moving on to that uranus but still i think he's got he has got some difficulties to to contend with so that i think does make does make a, a lot of sense and um, Charon is giving him problems. Uh, look at this. Charon is Charon is at Charon at the time of the interview was at twenty three twenty four Aries. So Charon was square his Saturn. So Saturn is his I don't know perhaps his limits and how he's trying to control things. And Charon is creating. Uh, sort of an uncertainty and it might be a certain sense of the wound maybe feeling wounded by these attacks and it's just not fully working for him but still I wouldn't I, I don't know I wouldn't really I just would not underestimate that Saturn square his Uranus and then there's got then there's Uranus itself <clears throat> Uranus is at 27.6 Taurus so Uranus is still very close to the square of his Mars. Um, and the assassination attempt on, um, which was on um, July the 15th, was when you had the Mars conjunct Uranus square his Mars, but Uranus hasn't, Uranus hasn't gone anywhere. And so Uranus is still undermining his Mars. And remember, Mars is perhaps particularly has been particularly prominent since his 78th birthday when uh you know Aquarius and Saturn became the uh, from a perfection point of view started to become became prominent the moment he hit his uh, 78th birthday so Mars is a very sensitive point for him at the at the moment and so with Uranus square his Mars it's still there actually I think that that Trump is, is still has to be watch out for his safety. I mean, I know we've had the Mars-Uranus conjunction already, but that's probably the peak where 
the peak threat, but it's still there. And um, but perhaps we also need to see Mars about his anger and his frustration. And, you know, Trump has a very strong Mars. Um, it's it's conjunct regulus. It's um, it it has minor dignity it's not peregrine and also he has mars aspecting the ascendant midheaven midpoint so mars is semi-square his ascendant midheaven midpoint remember the ascendant midheaven midpoint that is a time and the place so when uranus aspects his mars it's also aspecting his ascendant midheaven midpoint so he is under pressure. Notice, though, look at Mercury. Mercury is about to move onto his ascendant, uh, move retrograde back onto his ascendant. Uh, that might be something something to watch. So in terms of transits, I think we can see the issue. Oh, but let's do, you know, in terms of quincunxes and outer planets, you know, his ascendant is very, very much an important way in which he presents himself. And so he's he's got Neptune quincunx his ascendant he's got pluto moving towards a quincunx of his ascendant so you could say that neptune and pluto are the neptune midpoint pluto midpoint is hitting his ascendant and so that is how he presents himself and it's just i suppose he's he's dealing with wider forces that he doesn't fully understand and that may be having a negative impact in terms of his presentation so those are a few transits, but what about secondary progression? So, in terms of my analysis of charts, I've, I, te- I have, I've sort of shied away from secondary progressions. But secondary progressions is a sort of bread and butter technique in astrology. So, secondary progressions is when you just, you know, on seventy eighth year, you just look in the ephemeris at what the planets are doing on the seventy eighth year after he was born. So. These are the positions of the planets on August the 31st, 1946, which is 78 days after he was born. So we we count 78 days and then we, we say, well, this has, has says something about what's happening in his his life. And with secondary progressions, the moon does move quite quickly. So progressed moon for, for Trump is in Scorpio. And so progressed moon in Scorpio is it's not great it's it's fallen in it's it's fallen in scorpio and perhaps he's really starting to feel it and you know he's he's already had progress moon square his saturn now that would have been that would have been exact in may june July, i think in may so kind of a, that was the time when he was was he that was when he was found guilty in New York of I think that was approximately so that was moon square Saturn so he kind of survived moon and Scorpio square Saturn but still in generally speaking moon and Scorpio progress having a progress moon and Scorpio is not particularly fortunate um, it perhaps makes him a little bit brooding makes him edgy makes him perhaps difficult to deal with but on the plus side, uh, from his progress, the progress moon is applying to a square of the sun. And so I think from his perspective, like over the next month, as the moon makes a sextile to the sun, that does, I think, perhaps give him the, the opportunity to sort of um, get a grip, perhaps, and uh, not be so upset about the way things are happening and just get that moon in scorpio under control moon, moon sex our sun is a nice aspect but i'm uh i think it, it's certainly going to mitigate i think the moon in scorpio now looking at how the progress planets are con- are aspecting his natal planets uh, there are still a few things to be concerned about here. Uh, one thing is that his progressed Venus is square his natal Saturn. And I think that the progressed Venus square his natal Saturn is not an easy aspect. Um, so that's uh, 
about things not working out, uh, feeling um, that uh, he can't fully express himself. It might be something to do with his mood and perhaps it relates to the women around him and of course what he's saying about the women around him. And I think that Venus square Saturn is he needs to be very careful here, remembering that he's got a debate with a woman coming up on September the 10th with Kamala Harris. He has Venus conjunct Saturn in his chart. Now, if you, I suppose, wanted to be positive about his Venus conjunct Saturn in his chart, you could say, well, this may be someone who defeats two female candidates and he's already defeated Hillary. Now, if he were to defeat Hillary in November, then that would be a great example of Venus conjunct Saturn. He's able to prevent two women from becoming presidents of the United States. And so the fact that he has a Venus conjunct Saturn in his natal chart and he's got progressed Venus square his Saturn means, I would have said, the very nature of his Venus Saturn conjunction in his chart. You know, we often forget that Donald Trump has cancer planets. We always focus on Trump the Gemini. He does have cancer planets. And so that Venus and Saturn could perhaps work in his favour, perhaps in terms of defeating Kamala, maybe. Uh, and maybe, you know, I suppose if I was advising Trump, I would... I would tell him to be careful, obviously, during that interview, but there might be a silver lining there, but I'm not sure. I don't think you can sort of take that for granted. Now, another thing going on here with Trump is his progress midheaven. His progress midheaven is at 9 Leo. So his progress midheaven is moving towards a conjunction of his Pluto. Now, you could say progress midheaven on the Pluto, conjunct Pluto, that is the end of his political career. That's one way of doing it losing losing in November. But you could say the opposite, couldn't you? Uh, an exercise, exercise of power winning the election. If I had to make a choice, I don't know. I'd, I'd probably be more inclined to be negative about it, I think. But I'm not sure. Pluto is always difficult because Pluto can be very contradictory as a planet. Um, it can represent really taking something on board and being powerful with it. But it can also be about repressing things. It, it's, it, it can be a, a problem planet. And then I just want to quickly look at his um, a solar arc direction. So solar arc direction is when you just move everything. And uh, when you move absolutely everything. So these are his solar arc directions. When you move every planet 78 degrees, you don't just follow the cycles of the different planets. You move every planet a uniform distance and there are with his solar arc directions i think with his solar arc directions i think you can again see some of his communication issues coming up because his solar arc directed saturn is square his natal mercury his natal mercury so he's got mercury at 852 cancer and saturn at 838 Libra. So with Saturn square his natal Mercury, yeah, I mean, I think that that could be communication issues. It could be the way his brain is working. That is possible. And of course, the problem about Saturn square Mercury is how you respond to it. So with Saturn square Mercury, you could respond to it by anger that doesn't really, that isn't really very pro productive. It just upsets people. Um, it, doesn't do your reputation any good and likewise we've got we've got another aspect going on um uh solar arc directed um neptune where's solar arc directed neptune gone there his solar arc directed neptune is starting to move towards a conjunction of his moon again uh i think that could be problematic Neptune conjunct moon, something sort of disintegrating around him. And the moon is for Trump. You know, for Trump, I think his moon is more about how he communicates on his Mercury. So I know I've just said Saturn square, his Mercury says something about the way he communicates. But I just think that Trump, he communicates more through his moon than through his Mercury. You may disagree with him, but perhaps with 
Neptune conjunct his moon, if we see it as a communication issue, he needs to be careful what he says because that that solar arc directed Neptune is getting closer and closer to the conjunction of his moon. And so it is making him um, somewhat uh, sort of confused and his sort of sense of facts and reality may be a, a somewhat uh, distant. And I looked at his solar return. I just wanted to look at his lunar return. So he had a he had a lunar return on um, his last lunar return. This was his lunar return for July the 18th, 2024. So the lunar return he's been in, uh, I mean, it's not, it's not a great lunar return, I wouldn't have said. Uh, he's got, uh, the moon is sort of square black moon Lilith, if you're, if, you, if you're into, into that. So that maybe creates, creates some problems. And um, Mercury is, well, Mercury is trine Charon, but Mercury is square, Mercury is square Uranus. So um, the things he, I mean, it's not exactly square Uranus, but it's it's relatively close. I mean, I don't think that it's a spectacularly difficult lunar return, but that's a lunar return he's in. And the lunar return he's moving into comes into force. Well, it's just come into force, um, comes into force on Wednesday. This is his new lunar return. I would have said that his new lunar return starting on August the 14th is is much better. Uh, because the moon is at you know twenty one Sagittarius, it's trine the sun, so you've got moon trine sun, and and it is trine Charon as well. But uh, you know, the North Node is in the same sign as the ascendant. So my guess is perhaps perhaps that things may start to stabilise um, in terms of of Trump and how he behaves and how he comes over, but. One final thing that we really do need to consider is the full moon on Monday. I think this full moon on Monday is really important, not just for Trump, I think, because it's the first day of a Democratic National Convention. You know, in, in 2016, Hillary had a local peak in her polling and in, in, in her percentage chance of winning around August the 13th. And after that, she went down. And I... And, you know, it's the same time of year now. And the very fact that the Democratic National Convention happens at the, happens at the time of a new moon, of a full moon, and, and actually a very dramatic new full moon, and a dram full moon that is really dramatic for Trump as well. So this is the full moon chart. I've looked at this chart before, and I don't really want to look at it too much in terms of the Democratic National Convention, but I do think that this is a turning point, this full moon. I would have expected Trump's polling figures to start to improve after the full moon. Not necessarily because of him, but because of the other side. You know, we've only, I've only looked at Trump's chart, but if this full moon is so critical, this is a turning point. If, it, if, his, if Trump's polling figures do not turn on, around the full moon or soon after the full moon because a, a full moon is just like a change of direction and if it's so if i don't know i suppose if a democratic national convention is a great success and you get start to get momentum behind kamala harris and it, you know everyone's expecting it to be a success you talk about the convention bump and all of this kind of stuff but it is a full moon now that full moon is going to impact the convention i think because it happens there it, it, it affects the United States. Remember, the United States has its moon at 27 Aquarius, and this is a full moon at 27 Aquarius. And of course, this full moon affects Trump's chart. And uh, so here is Trump's chart. There is a full moon. Sun is exactly on his Mars. Moon is opposition his Mars, Uranus is square his Mars, his Mars gets really hit. Now, 
Trump has to be careful just on a physical level, security level with his full moon on his Mars. But how is he going to respond? And I think we're going to know pretty pretty quickly afterwards how he's going to respond. And I think this is this full moon. Uh, it, it may all depend on this full moon. And look at Mercury at the time of the full moon. Mercury, you've got a Sun-Mercury conjunction hitting his Mars. Um, is he going to lash out? Um, is he going to find some new way of reinventing himself? Is the full moon going to be about re the reality for Trump? It's difficult to say. Um, it is very touch and go, but there is this question is this full moon because it is just because it starts on the first day of a democratic national convention just makes me think perhaps all things being equal it's going to have a potentially have a downside for the democrats and finally i actually want to look at one more chart and that final chart i want to look at is a vedic chart and this is uh this is Trump's Vedic chart. And I just want to look at one Dasha change. Uh, because remember, in, in Vedic astrology, you have Dashas, nine Dashas, and together they last for 120 years. And Trump is in his... Uh, Trump in, is in his Jupiter Dasha. And his Jupiter Dasha started... Um, uh, his Jupiter Dasha started in uh, November 2016. Just as he became president, his Jupiter, da Jupiter Dasha started, just as he was elected president, his Jupiter Dasha started. And Jupiter lasts for 16 years. So he's, you could say, well, he's still a prominent figure. Uh, he's still standing for president, you know, uh, eight years, eight, eight years later. And his Jupiter Dasha con continues until 2032. And so, obviously, one, whatever happens, he's not going to be president by then. But it's the sub Dashas that I'm thinking about. Now, at the moment, since October 20, in, from October 2023 until September, end of September 2024, he's in the Jupiter Major Dasha and the Ketu's. North right, South Node Sub Dasha, and clearly this has been a time of complete turmoil for Trump's highs and lows, and assassination attempts, and being convicted of things, and uh, you know the drama with Elon Musk is all all part of it. But it, it's coming to an end, and it may very well be that what is key to whether or not Trump is going to win win the election is. What happens when he moves into his Jupiter major Dasha and Venus sub Dasha? And that happens on September the 27th, 2024. And his Venus is quite strong by Shad Bala. Uh, his Venus rules his 10th house, because remember, this is the first house. So, so that's good with Venus. But the trouble is Venus is in the 12th house and it is conjunct Saturn. So you could say that that Venus conjunct Saturn is just not good being in the 12th and that you would then expect things to fall apart for Trump very soon as he moves into, um, into late, uh, you know, as, as September turns to October. That, that is one possibility. But, you know, Hindu astrology has got all sorts of complications and exceptions and there's all sorts of stuff going on and you might argue that well Venus and Jupiter are in Cancer and the exaltation ruler of Cancer is Jupiter and Jupiter is the ruler of the larger sub-period and so maybe there's um, uh, some mitigation there but you know, I would be interested if you're into Vedic astrology. What do you, what do you actually make of that Venus Saturn, uh, of that Venus Venus Saturn Sabdasha? 
you know, I use Vedic astrology, but I would not have said that I was an expert on Vedic astrology. But if you happen to be an expert on Vedic astrology or you you think you, you have some insights on that, I would be really interested in because I've been thinking about it a lot. And uh, I suppose my inclination would be to see it in a negative light, even though Venus is ruler of the 10th. But there just might be some exception um, and also I have to say that you cannot predict the result of an election just on the basis of a natal chart. I do not think that's possible because there are too many problems with that. OK, so those are a few thoughts about Trump's chart. I've I've been negative here um, because I just wanted to look at Trump. By and large, I've tried to look at chart, Trump's chart in a negative sense and... Um, looking at all the reasons why things might be going wrong for him. But I do think that as we hit this full moon uh, next week, I think we're going to start to get a, the, get the bigger picture, not just after the full moon, but from the, in the following fortnight, um, in the end of September, I suppose, through until, what is it, um, Labor Day. See, see how the late August works and see how the polls work, because I think... Um, I would have, there may be a change. And also we have to remember that this Mars-Saturn square uh, on Friday, it does hit Kamala Harris quite seriously. Her Venus gets really mangled by that Mars-Saturn square. So, yeah, the next, uh, next week could be very interesting. OK, right. Thank you very much for listening to me. Um, if you enjoyed this video, I'd be very grateful if you were to indicate that you liked the video. If you're not subscribed and you enjoyed the video, I mean, surely you enjoyed the video if you if you got this far. Um, I'd be very grateful if you were to subscribe because it doesn't cost you anything, but it does make a big difference. And uh, yeah, if you want to buy me a coffee, there is a link in the description. So thanks again for listening and I will talk to you again tomorrow.